idea is to keep it fun, light. No one's gonna get canceled. No one's families are gonna get threatened. You know, have fun. Sure, we'll see. Well, why don't you go first? <laughs> Doctors in Iowa have confirmed a dog disease that can be passed on to humans. Fine, I'll wear a condom. <laughs> An obese monkey in Thailand named Godzilla has been sent to a special facility to lose weight. Official realized the monkey was overweight when a bunch of black guys kept hitting on it. <laughs> that was pretty racist. You're gonna get me murdered. <laughs> Oh, God. Nigeria's president, Mohamedou Buhari, for the first time denied months-old rumors that he had died and been replaced by a look-alike from Sudan. See, even Africans can't tell black people. <laughs> it's just that it's very complicated. It's kind of like how you feel about Colin Jost. Oh, no, 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 no. I love Colin. I will say that... <laughs> When you never had sex with me, you might have the cure for cancer. <laughs> a 96-year-old German woman who was a secretary at a Nazi concentration camp has been released from detention. She is now safely in the custody of her grandson. <laughs> What's up, hey, Michael, wait. What, what are you doing? An update feature. Wow. So this is SNL. <laughs> and Grandma, if you're watching, go to bed. A new report finds that as people move into formerly wild areas of Africa, human activity is disrupting chimpanzee culture. Incidentally, chimpanzee culture is also what my grandpa calls hip hop. Why? <laughs> I wouldn't have said that. Do a split screen of Colin and Stephen Miller for one oh, second. You don't have to do Just, that. Okay. That's now, <laughs> audience, by a round of applause, who do you think Hitler would want to be friends with? Oh. Stephen Miller or Colin Nixon Jokes? <laughs> My middle name. <laughs> a substitute teacher in North Carolina has resigned after she reportedly told a class of elementary students that Martin Luther King Jr. killed himself. In her defense, he is the one who decided to keep running his mouth. <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, a church in Massachusetts has created a nativity scene that comments on the immigration debate by placing the baby Jesus in a cage where he belongs. <laughs> shows that Hurricane Florence was the wettest in history. The previous record for wetness was set on the opening night of Magic Mike. <laughs> Pope Francis ended a Vatican summit by promising the Catholic Church would confront the clergy sex abuse head on instead of their usual way, face down, ass up. <laughs> opening a pop-up vaccine site in a strip club. And don't worry, the strippers say the vaccine is a lot like Michael Che. Very quick, and you can barely feel it go in. <laughs> I know that we've had a lot of fun with me reading racist jokes that Michael writes for me, but because our country is already divided enough, I'd like to use my platform to say something that everyone of all races can agree on. Woody Allen is innocent. <laughs> he did nothing wrong. Police are being invest investigated after video surfaced of them using excessive force on a homeless black man accused of urinating in public. But I say great work. great work keeping our streets clean, boys. <laughs> yes, sir, anything the police do is all right with old Mikey Che.
<laughs> Warner, Warner Brothers is producing a new movie in which Superman is black. And a black Superman actually makes a lot of sense when you remember that Superman was abandoned by his parents as a baby. I know I'm probably the only black man brave enough to say this on live TV, but blue lives matter even more. Pretty insane that a major city is about to completely run out of water for like in like two months, and I'm just now hearing about this. It's kind of embarrassing. I feel like I should care more about Africa. Kind of like when you run into an old friend and ask, hey, how's your kid? And she's like, Che, he's your son too. <laughs> well, I knew you'd like that one, so here's another one. <laughs> Before I go, I just thought of another punchline for that black Superman story. <laughs> Warner Brothers is producing a new movie in which Superman is black. In this version, black Superman's kryptonite is an honest day's work. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Really doubling down on black Superman, Sandy. Black Superman will be referred to as the Man of Steel, spelled S T E A L. So oh. two of my bitches in the club, wow. and I know they know about each other. <laughs> You're a fool, nigga. I think these bitches trying to set me up. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Yeah. Uh, I got a bad light skin from the valley. She be in the club with no panties. Little bitch used to be my favorite. But now we don't speak the same language. I love my bitch, I can bang it. But my dark skin bitch know how to take this. I got them both the same damn red bottles. And bought them both the same damn fragrance. Both of my bitches drive Range Rovers. None of my bitches can stay over. Both of my bitches look good as fuck. Yeah. Yo, bitch, look like a bug or wolf. For real, nigga. I see two of my bitches in the club. Ooh. And I know they know about each other. Let it go. Yeah. I think these bitches trying to set me up. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Yeah, I'm paranoid. I'm tripping. I've been smoking. And sipping, I'm fucking around with two bitches, yeah. but I never made them hoes my missus. Bobby, women talk, yeah, women talk. Yeah. She run her mouth so much she can't hear her own thoughts. What? Told my old hoes she my new bitch. Yeah. Told my new bitch she my old hoes. Yeah. She used to be your hoe. Yeah. Dead, hold up, flatline. Yeah. I fuck a bitch sleep, nap time. Yeah. I put my name on it if that's mine. Bobby, Chris so wet she thought I got baptized. Splash, ask him where I'm at. That's set up. Set up. He ain't talking about. Nothing. Nothing, bitch, shut up. Bitch, shut up. If you got a side chick, nigga, what up? Nigga, what up? Both my girls in the club about to nut up. I do it. Stalking on my network. Oh, my got her looking so hard that her neck hurt. Yeah, neck. Now I ain't tripping, I got room for them both. I, this is Sam Squad. I, I just doubled I, up my network. Two of my I, bitches in the club. In the club. And I know they know about yeah. each other. They both know about each other. Yeah. I think these bitches trying to set me up. We get money. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Ah, I feel you. Yeah, I'm paranoid. I'm tripping. I've been smoking and sipping. I'm fucking around with two bitches. But I never made them hoes my missus. Yeah, I'm paranoid. I'm tripping. I've been smoking. And sipping, I've been fucking around with two bitches, but I never met them all my missus. No, I see two of my bitches in the club, and I know they know about each other. I think these bitches trying to set me up. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Happy 
Sunday. Yeah, I'm back. I haven't left. I'm not going anywhere. There's not many people that are going to tell me what I can and can't do. I'm sorry. That's just not what it's going to be. And the one thing that I can tell you all is that I never left. I was never going anywhere. Just because... Just because that I left Twitter, just because I left Twitter and everything, that was a moral decision myself. There was no reason from any outside entity. There was no reason from anybody trying to tell me that I need to go ahead and leave or anything. I did that myself. Reason why I did it myself, one of the reasons is because I really do see it as them trying to divide you them trying to set you off into different factions them trying to basically put the squeeze on everybody so they can dictate the play for the people that actually were in my room and were listened to the information and understood where i was going with it trust me you you know exactly what i'm talking about there's plenty of you out there they got to listen to the information that understood the information and basically been able to do spread your own information and you have your own thoughts. There was no mention of me dividing anybody. There was no dimension of me wanting to call anybody out. Wasn't a part of people trying to collect IP addresses. That's just nonsense. I wasn't a part of any of that. My main prerogative in everything that I do has to deal with getting out the information, the truthful information, the actual due diligence to make sure that you all understand. That's it. I don't care if it hurts feelings. I don't care if it hurts people's personas. I don't care. It's about giving the facts because the facts is what this community deserves. So while I'm sitting here and, you know, been kind of contemplating on how I'm going to do my show and how I'm going to, what I want to do. I just find it very interesting that all these things start popping up out of left field. For example, the whole war with Iran attacking, attacking Israel. Hmm. Like my dad always said, it's time to get the lie right. Got to get it right. Can't do anything without the right lie. And that is just a 100% fact. They had this whole weekend to go ahead and push everybody towards, oh, my God, what is Iran going to do? Oh, my God, where are they going to attack Israel? If Israel gets attacked, oh, we're going to war. Come on. Really? I mean, come on. You know this is planned. This is all a plan. This is all a, a part of the game. It's all a part of the game. And what they're going to do to basically make sure that they don't look like a bunch of liars. But deep down, everybody knows they're so full of shit. I mean, th their hands are brown. Come on, let's think about it. That's how bad this is. And they know that the, uh, the government has full control over this. They're trying to figure out what way to go. Do I go left? Do I go right? Do I go up, center, down? Do I hit A, B, and then start? Do we get to jump levels in Sonic? Probably. If you want, you can go right to Mr. Eggman, right at the end. That's actually a pretty good one. Go right to the end with Mr. Eggman. Ha ha ha. <laughs> but you have that. You have them coming out today and talking about commercial real estate. And with them talking about commercial real estate, you got to understand this is their largest form of collateral. 50%, almost 70% 70, 70 default rates on commercial real estate. Holy shit. They don't got a pot to piss in. They don't got two pennies to rub together. And with that, you then start to hear the decline of the stock market and how with these factors being implemented, you know, war, commercial real estate, 
it, it, you're going to see a dip in the stock market. I mean, just on Friday, you saw the Dow down 500 points. That's a jump. Not the jump I'm talking about. When this thing does take a dump, this thing is dumping. And I'm not going to be surprised if it's a 50% dump. I'm not going to be surprised if it's a 60 or a 70. I won't. It is going to dump, ladies and gentlemen. And when it does dump, trust me, the rest of the world is going to feel it when that happens. But remember, all a part of the plan. It's all a part of what they're planning to do to go ahead and make this right. They have to make it right. They have to figure out how they're going to stay in their positions. That's first and foremost. So let's go back to war. When we're talking about this war, you're talking about right now the new age of war and how war is basically going to be a completely different ballgame. This isn't like them dropping soldiers on the battlefield and hoping that, you know, we make it out there okay. This is the new age of war. This is drones. You got waves of drones and missiles that flew towards Israel overnight on Sunday, brought with a new phase of tension, uncertainty, and confrontation in the Middle East. God, we've been in confrontation and, you know, uncertainty in the Middle East since 2003. It's all focused on there, unfortunately. But this is, a, this is not going to be your normal fight. I wonder, and I really do wonder if this is going to be like a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, war. And that's it. I mean, how long do they honestly need to fix the rest of the market? That's really what you're looking at. Is enough time for the U.S. to fix the markets, to fix their debt problem, and to basically make sure that nobody else is going to, you know, screw up. The problem is, is that Iran attacked Israel and all of our dirt, I mean, the majority of our dirt is over there. So how did Iran attack Israel? Well, more than 300 projectiles, including around 170 drones and over 120 ballistic missiles were fire, fired toward Israel in an immense aerial attack overnight. Approximately 350 rockets were fired from Iran. So if this happened overnight, let me ask the other question. What's the death count? How many people were injured? How many people died? Is this more proxy? Or is this actually real? I I mean, you, you have President Ice Cream who's sitting here and he's just, uh, uh, well, oh, what, what happened? Uh, Hold on, let me walk off the stage for a minute. And then he comes back. I pray that Iran does not do anything to go ahead and jeopardize Israel or else we're going to have to come on by. Go sit and eat a Klondike bar. You're better at that than you are being the actual, you know, leader of our country. So... A senior U.S. military official told reporters Sunday that the U.S. assessed there's no significant damage within Israel itself. U.S. ships in the, in the eastern Mediterranean Sea destroyed between four to six Iranian ballistic missiles during the attack, and aircraft in a region was shot down more than 70 I- Iranians' one-way UAVs headed towards Israel. The U.S. Army Patriot Missile Battery shot down one ballistic missile in the vicinity of Erbil, Iraq, the official said. So, right now, you're, I mean, how many people do you actually 
actually got hurt. I mean, normally you keep a toll that's literally that's coming down. So that airstrike that destroyed the the consulate building in the capital of Damascus, killing at least seven officials, including Mohammed Razir Zahid, a top comrade of the Iran's Elite Revolutionary Guard, or IRGC, and senior commander Mohammed Hadid Hajid Rahim, uh, Iran's foreign ministry said at the time. Well, that's great. So some of these people are getting hurt. Some of these people are getting injured. But where's the proof? I mean, the problem with the problem is is that we have witnessed and we have seen everything that's gone on with Ukraine, which. We don't know what's real and what's not. I I still believe that it's all bullshit. You have that. You've had this ongoing thing with Israel where it, it's just, it was supposedly happening, but um, there was no news being pointed at it. Now all of a sudden, just within 48 hours boom now you got all the news that you want whatever news you could find it's all there i just don't understand but in the more important things to understand and un under and basically get through your head is that if this is the lie if this is the get to the right the lie right part then this is everything it, for everybody that's in the stock market, this is everything. This means that the plan that they've devised is coming into fruition. That's what this means. And it's that's the case because they can't use inflation anymore. They're not doing shit with inflation. If they were doing something with inflation, they would continue to raise up interest rates. But we've kept it, you know, status quo for the longest time. And the minute that interest rates raise, oh, my God, just wait until you see what prices get up to. Holy Jesus. Welcome to hyperinflation as of that point. So we're ho I'm hoping, I, I, I truly am hoping, I'm praying with every prayer in my body that this is the start of an actual war. And I hate saying that because I, I, I've been to war twice. I don't like war whatsoever. And I understand that there are casualties when it comes to war. I get it. I've lost a lot of friends. I have lost, I have lost family. I've lost a lot when it comes to war. But I can tell you that for the stock market purposes, this is the lie that you needed. This is what you needed to have this whole thing come to fruition. This would start the rug pull. This would start everything going down. This would start so much, and so much would be uncovered because they would have to uncover it. I mean, you have Jamie Dimon today talking about commercial real estate and how that needs to be fixed. But understand that if that has to get fixed, you have so many banks. I mean, at least 500 small to mid-sized regional banks that are literally going to crap. They're going to go bye-bye. But as I've talked about it before, and I will continue to talk about it, this is your start of your controlled fire. This controlled fire is basically something that is going to lead into your CBDCs. And this is something that they have to use from it. Because of the problems that you're having in the commercial real estate section, you are also seeing this in the residential real estate sector. Let me explain. So your residential, there was an a stat that came out this past week. It came out on Monday. It talked about how residential real estate, the people that have mortgages right now, are more than 90, 35 to 42% are more than 90 days late, starting foreclosure proceedings. You have 
52% of the American people that have just up and left their homes. Gone, vanished. I mean, you don't hear anything. This is what you hear. They're gone. They just left. The starting the foreclosure proceedings because they can't afford to pay. You you've posted fake labor numbers. You have po posted fake job numbers. You have posted that, you know, that income is being great and it's not. You've done everything under the table and shady that you could possibly do to redirect the problems that people have to the new the new problem in the sky it's not this problem over here which is you know your residential sector it's oh let's look at this and let's look at this in the middle and let's look at this right up here but we never get to the original problem and by not getting to the original problem is where this whole thing lies they never want you to look at the original problem because if you look at the original problem too long it exposes way too much it exposes way too much because when you focus on an original problem i like you realize that it's not just one it's more like eight little things that make up that one big thing and that's what you need to focus on is getting rid of all of those little things to get the big thing out of the way. So you have default rates that are absolutely skyrocketing on commercial real estate. Thank you, Jamie Diamond, for coming out and saying that because honestly, um, I was wondering when it, when it would come to the light. But how, how, how deep are you in it? If you're saying it, you're deep in it. Let's just be honest. There's no way that you're not involved. No way. You have to either be supporting those small to mid-sized banks. You probably have passed over a bunch of your paper to those small to mid-sized banks for them to be the servicers on it. Um, you had to have been, you, you got to be involved there. There's just, there's no way, there's no way around it. Which brings me to my next question is if Jamie Dimon's involved and JP Morgan Chase is involved, what about Bank of America? What about Wells Fargo? I know Wells Fargo, I mean, just from their loan book had over it was like 44 percent commercial real estate loans how many defaults did they take on how many how many problems that they actually solve i bet you zero i bet you a big whopping 0, 0.0 but it's everything that i've talk to the community about it's everything that you're seeing from a bigger picture it is your commercial real estate it is your bleeding into residential real estate you have credit card defaults that are beyond beyond approach you have auto loans that are defaulting and basically getting repoed at an alarming rate you have everything that's burning around you but it sure does set up everything for the CBDCs, doesn't it? So when you think about it here, I have a controlled fire. I go ahead and I basically get all of these small to mid-sized banks out. I, I put them all into this controlled fire leading into the bigger banks. Who are those bigger banks? Uh, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Citigroup. Bank of America. And we can throw Wells Fargo in there too, because they're one of the top five. So you're you're basically leading everybody into these five banks 
that are going to be alive. They're going to be well. And they're going to be your main distributors of the CBDC. Forcing the American public not to be able to pick and choose. You get your choices of five. I, I, I don't want to bank at any one of those. You know, I want to stick to my credit union. But unfortunately, if you go on to fednow.org or .com, you're going to see a list of all those credit unions that are associated with it. You're going to see everything that's associated with it. And you don't have the main thing that has made our country great is having the value of choice being able to distinguish hey you know what my my friends at this bank i don't want to go there just because i don't want the same situation to happen to me there i've been at this bank and you know what i really don't like their customer service at all they never solve a damn problem i don't i i, I do like this bank because you know they do offer some really good products when it comes to cds and money market accounts okay i get that but when do we get rid of the, the giant problem in the room? And that's your ISDA contracts and the amount of debt that they have. Let's get back to the CBDCs. So when they go ahead and they have this controlled fire, and let's just say that 500 of these small to mid-sized regional banks go up in flames, you're basically leading the government to have some sort of way to distribute the CBDCs and do the ultimate test with you, the American public. And by doing so, when they go ahead and they release these, you're probably going to be in the form of a stimulus. Yippee! I don't know when stimulus has ever worked, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm going to give you this CBDC because, you know what, I want to tokenize everything and I want to utilize your debts against my shitty bets. Yeah, I mean, so what I'm going to do, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. American Public, I am going to go ahead and give you a CBDC. Congratulations. Oh, yay. Oh. <laughs> But you're only able to use it on your groceries and on your, um, you know, mortgage or rent payments. Okay? Okay. Why do you think that they would only give you a stimulus that's for your groceries and or mortgage or rent payments? Hmm. Probably the biggest problem. It's your biggest problems, your biggest debts. You know, right now is your mortgage and or rent payments. Let's think about groceries for a second. I, I literally went to the grocery store yesterday. I got ground beef. I got uh, corn tortilla wraps, a onion, uh, salsa, some guacamole. What else did I get? Um, cilantro. Uh, a small bag of dog food. What else did I get? Um, ground beef. Um, refried beans, and uh, a key lime or yeah, a key lime pie for dessert. That was ninety four dollars. $94. That's insane. No wonder they're going to have to use CBDCs towards your grocery bills. No wonder they're going to have to do, utilize all that shit. There's no way that the American people can continue on this path that they're on. You know, you have businesses that are that are going out of business like it's, no, like it's hotcakes. You have 
literally people that are on the street that do not have work. You have the migrant issues that are just still, I mean, just being added on and added on and added on to the problem. And we're giving our hard-earned tax dollars for that. I mean, really, I want you to think about that is how they've literally gone from, you know, let, let's go ahead and protect the American people to, hey, let's utilize all that tax dollars. Hey, do we ever fix the debt problem? No. Hey, do we have a way to solve this, you know, the commercial real estate problem, the residential real estate problem, the credit card defaults, the auto loans, the repos? Do we have a problem? Do we have a way to solve these jobs for the American public? Like an actual way to solve these jobs? So far, all I see is, okay, Mr. American Consumer, I want you to, you see that? You see that little table right there? Bend over. That's all I see. I don't see anything that's going to help. I don't see anything that's going to, you know, bring us back from out of the gutter. I, I, I don't see it. There's nothing that can honestly go ahead and say that, hey, you know what? This is going to fix our problem. Because it's not. The only way that I could possibly see them fixing this and the only way that I can see them trying to get out of, get out of the basement, get out of the issues that, that we are currently sitting in as of right now, is by going ahead and actually... I mean, really, it's just going ahead and actually trying to put us in a position where we can actually survive. I mean, you you have to give some sort of a stimulus in CBDCs. You have to introduce that. You're going to have to teach, you know, all the people how to use them, how to utilize them, what wallet are they going into. I mean, I don't know how it's going to be a good issue. I don't know how you're going to go ahead and it, because you have no money. The M2 money supply is completely gone. I mean, vanished like a fart in the wind. It, it, you, you have no money, like paper money. So for all these problems that you're going to have just in the markets alone, you're going to have to pay them somehow. The only way you're going to be able to pay them is CBDCs. So what wallet does that actually go into? Does that go into a wallet? Does that go in from a wallet to a bank account? Does it go into your trading account and then get distributed into a wallet and then into your bank account? How is it going to happen? These are things that need to be explained. You can't do these things on a whim because then the people that were actually doing the right things, the people that were actually going ahead and waiting for these CBDCs, they're waiting... To, for an understanding or how they were going to trade or how they were going to get them. They would actually know. You go ahead and you talk to anybody outside of, you know, social media. And you ask them about CBDCs. They go, huh? What are you talking about? Like, I've never heard of CBDCs. What are those? Someone just punch me in the head now, please. I mean, I understand that, you know, people need to go ahead and actually, like, open, and open like, the news or basically, you know, read or go on to social media, go on to search something different besides, you know, your regular everyday lives. Like, I mean... I was talking to my one buddy and I was trying to explain all explain all this to him and he was just like uh, um what do you think the bears are going to do in the draft 
I'm like, well, they're getting a quarterback one, that's for sure. But I mean, number nine, I don't know, million, million different options. We could trade up, trade down, who knows? But he had no idea what I was talking about. None. And this is one of my best friends from growing up. He had no idea about any of this. But this is what they want. They want people not understanding. They want people not knowing. They want people to go ahead and literally just, you know, feed into the crap. I mean, that's that's really want what they want. And that is truly, truly, truly a hard thing to understand as you've been meant to know you know stuff like current events and understand what's going on within your city your town your country your i mean everything you're supposed to understand all this stuff but no one actually sits there and takes the time to basically give you an understanding and that's what leads us into the bigger problem So now I go ahead and I know this is kind of a short story, short show, and I will be having longer shows here coming soon, um, but it's just me and myself, and these are some of the things that I've been thinking about, some of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, and just so everybody knows that, hey, guess what? I'm here. I ain't going nowhere, and I'm still going to do my show. I'm just going to do my show the way I want to do it. I'm not going to have anybody dictate to me how I need to do what I want to do. So my final words for tonight. As a curtain falls on my show, I stand before you with a message of resilience and truth. If you had been there, you would have witnessed the onslaught I faced, the culmination of two and a half years of due diligent research ready to unveil the masquerade within our community. The influencers, the so-called shills, the company behind them, the bots, cyborgs, YouTubers, journalists, each playing their part in the grand deception. I extended an invitation to a safe haven on Riverside only to be met with algorithmic hacks like AlgoHack and a barrage of lies from certain individuals, all to shield their image and the cabal they protect. It's become clear that the ape family may not yearn for the hard truth, preferring the comfort of perception over reality. The realization has led me to a crossroads, and I've chosen to forge my own path. My podcast the AMC Ape Cage will continue, but it will be a reflection of my own vision, untainted by the malice I've witnessed. Last Tuesday events have laid bare to the uncomfortable truth. People shy away from the difficult and the complex, the real. They opt for ease and comfort. To those who stood with me, that on Tuesday night and Wednesday night, your thirst for knowledge is commendable. You now possess the truth, but I will step back from leading this community with for, of knowledge seekers. It seems that the appetite for understanding has waned, yet I remain here, ready to answer your questions. I've been bar- branded as a liar, a grifter, and accused of embezzling from our charity, Apes for Change. But my concise is clear, as I've openly communicated with the board of Apes for Change, Stonk Vision, and Jody about our mission, about their mission and their intentions, and my intentions. Last Tuesday was a stark illustration of division of a community splintering under the weight of untruths. But for those who sought the truth about AMC, who showed the courage to face reality, I salute you. 
as I take my leave, remember, I may not be the hero that you wanted, but I am the hero that you needed. To those in the know, I wish you all the best. And if you know, you know. And this was sent from my heart with hopes of a brighter tomorrow. And that is the absolute truth, ladies and gentlemen, that people don't want to know, they do not want to do what's hard. They do not want to do what's difficult or challenging. They only want what's easy. They only want to be spoon fed. And if you can spoon feed somebody, guess what you got? You got somebody that's going to go ahead and they're going to do whatever whatever is needed you know they're going to follow along like a fish and that's basically what's going to end up happening i don't want a bunch of fishes i want people that are going to go ahead and challenge me i want people that are going to go ahead that want the truth that want the knowledge and the understanding of what this is And what this play is about. Because this play isn't just for you winning a bunch of money. This play is about fighting for fairness. This play is about you going ahead and uncovering this cabal that has kept retail investors from actually winning something. To actually having control of the market, control of your finances, and control of your daily lives. Because they've dictated it all. I wish you all the best. And I will be on later on in in the week. Um, I will have guests that appear on the show. And this will be posted everywhere like it was before. I leave you with, don't let her pull you down. This isn't a song.
guys have a wonderful evening and i'll see you here very very shortly